The best milk foam has a luxurious yet light mouthfeel. It flows like cream and it shines just like this. Would it surprise you to learn that I didn't use an espresso machine? I made this by hand with a $30 gadget. That's right. You can get genuine microfoam using a French press. So how exactly does this work and which types of milk will yield the right texture? I've tested everything from half and half to skimmed milk, almond milk, oat milk, you name it. The good news is you can get legitimate microfoam from both dairy and non-dairy milk without using steam. The bad news? There's a narrow window for success, leaving us with only a few options. But if you want delicious milk drinks without spending a small fortune, I can hook you up. Oh my god. It's like a miracle. Many types of milk and milk substitutes work nicely with steam, but that's not our topic or our challenge. Today I'm investigating manually foamed milk to go with my manually pulled espresso, and I've got to admit the failure rate was high, except for one dairy product and one non-dairy substitute, both of which worked. This is a simple pass-fail report where I'll demonstrate only the successes. Showing the relentless parade of failures would be tedious. But I did copy and paste my notes in the video description if you're curious about the many candidates you won't be seeing. First, I tested every variety of cow's milk from half and half down to non-fat. Then I tried various alternatives like almond, oat, and soy milk. Before we start, I need to mod my French press. This takes all of 30 seconds. The cover limits the plunger's travel, so it needs to come off. Remove the screen assembly and the threaded sleeve. Notice that it's not symmetrical. Slide off the lid. Replace the sleeve with the flat oriented toward the screen, and voila. Bodum makes a dedicated milk foamer designed so that the lid stays on, which is convenient and neat, although I don't believe it makes coffee. I prefer the French press because it can do both. First up, ordinary whole milk, the only dairy product that worked well. Our biggest challenge is temperature management. With a manual rig, we can't heat the milk during or after foaming because once the bubbles form, they'll act as insulation and block the transfer of heat via conduction. So we have to warm the milk before dashing it. This is not ideal, as I'll explain. Steam is unbeatable. It heats the milk via convection and stretches it at the same time. Convective heating gives us an even temperature throughout the volume of milk and the air that you're working into it with no chance of scorching. Also, you can do this in your jug, which will heat up along with the milk, so you only need to preheat your cups to get a good drink. But here, you'll use a small saucepan. Once you hit the right temperature, you've got to pour from the pan into the press, which means some heat loss. Then you'll be working in room temperature air for a good deal more heat loss. And finally, you'll pour into the jug, losing still more heat. And I'm afraid you can't get away with overheating the milk to compensate. If you take dairy milk above 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll start to get a scorched, eggy flavor that spoils the drink. So that's a hard limit. A microwave oven might heat the milk evenly after foaming, but it wouldn't be precise and I suspect it would deflate the foam somewhat. I wasn't able to test it because I don't actually own a microwave oven. But if you've tried it, by all means, share your experiences in the comments. It helps to preheat all of your kit, the press, the jug, and your cups. Still, even when I'm being thorough, the drink ends up at around 50 degrees Celsius. I'd like it closer to 60. The right technique is to work in a little air early in the process, then to keep the screen below the surface. You don't want a coarse froth. Stretching the milk is a really good metaphor. You'll need to practice and experiment a bit to get it right, but a two times increase in volume, or thereabouts, works pretty well for me. 
There are electric gizmos that will agitate your milk while heating it via conduction, but as I said, the foam has an insulating effect, so you'll likely get some scorched flavors. And they tend to make a very stiff foam, like meringue. Once again, steam is better because a little condensation thins the foam, which in turn flows well enough for you to draw a design. Mechanically made foam is drier, and while it can have the same fine, moussey texture and velvet mouthfeel, the surface tension is too high for a design to flow across it. So decorative pouring is out, although I find this natural cloud motif pleasing enough to look at. If you want to use low-fat dairy milk, I've got bad news. I tried every type and combination I could think of, even adding a little non-fat milk powder to each of the specimens to increase the density, but that also failed. Too much fat was a problem as well, half and half failed. In fact, adding a mere tablespoon of cream to 125 milliliters of milk caused some problems. You've got to have exactly the right proportion of fat, liquid, and solid, and that means ordinary whole milk at around three and a quarter to three and a half percent butter fat. Again, my notes are in the description. I tested a number of non-dairy substitutes. Failure was the default, with one exception. I made passable microfoam using almond milk, although it wasn't pure, which I find interesting. This is the Nutty Bruce brand, and it contains rice. They appear to have struck an ideal recipe for creating microfoam without steam. It even surpassed my wife's homemade almond milk, which is denser, so you'd expect it to work better, only it didn't. I suspect that the almond and rice combination is the key here. In any case, this is decent mousse. It's drier than milk foam, but it pours well enough and it's fairly stable. It's not as supple as whole milk, but it feels pretty good on the palate. On the upside, it tolerates higher temperatures than milk, so you can compensate for some of the heat loss and make a nice warm drink with it. The flavor is mild, so I didn't really hate it. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy almond milk. I just don't like anything in my coffee, except maybe dairy milk or cream. A flat white is about as milky as I'm prepared to go. Oat milk failed. Soy milk failed. Other brands of almond milk failed, but at least there's one dairy milk and one non-dairy substitute that you can stretch properly without using steam. This means you can make cafe-style milk drinks for less than $500 all in. And none of that disappointing steam and mediocre espresso from some department store appliance. A robot and a French press will give you a real espresso drink. The only imperfections here are milk temperature and a lack of decorative potential. But is pouring a tulip shape really worth thousands of dollars to you? And uh, okay, there's the workflow. The robot is about as fast as a semi-auto machine once you're set up, but you can't foam your milk and pull a shot at the same time. However, two people can knock out the cappuccinos and flat whites for a multitude of guests. If one person makes double batches of milk, they can finish in rhythm with every second shot of espresso. And if you're working solo for just yourself or one other person, it's a little slow, but think of all the money you're saving. Well, that's about all for today. Up next, I'm going to help you dial in your espresso with a few insights that people tend to overlook. And then I'll be trying to hack the AeroPress in pursuit of a mocha pot or espresso kind of thing. After that, I'm not sure, maybe a grinder review. I'll be looking for your requests in the comments, so keep in touch. Cheers.